Hey there, Jim Johnson for Accent Help. And moving on in the American vowels on the chart, last time I talked about the ah sound. I have to kind of reference back because we got some variations. Last time I talked about the ah sound as in father, or otherwise known as the palm lexical set. And then I also made mention of the lot lexical set, L-O-T, as most Americans would say, it's something more like lot, but for some speakers, there's a difference between father, lot, instead it's father, lot, lot, for some speakers, something along that line. What I'm going to move on to now is what I'm going to call the thought, what J.C. Wells calls the thought vowel, which is really commonly written as this one. It looks like a backward C, and it's right here on the chart. It's an open, mid, back, rounded vowel. And this is what Arthur Lessac would call the number three, because it's, it's pretty rounded for some speakers. Not so much for Americans. And in fact, this symbol is really problematic to try to represent this sound, but that's what you're commonly going to see in various pronouncing dictionaries and things like that. So, got to live with it to some degree because, because I, I really want to teach these sounds based off of what are your reference points that will help you the most in trying to figure things out and then how do we tweak them from there. So, here's the deal. Having grown up in the far northern reaches of Iowa, on the verge of Minnesota, but I was lucky to avoid being born in Minnesota. Just kidding. It's the old Iowa-Minnesota joke thing. So, um, at least I'm not from Minnesota. Anyway, the, uh, this sound, for many people as you go further and further north, actually just merges completely with the ah sound like father, so that words like father and lot and cloth and thought become father and lot and cloth and thought. This is commonly called the cot-caught merger, C-O-T and C-A-U-G-H-T. Like I was caught lying on a cot. So, for many Americans, it becomes cot, cot. Identical, all going towards this. So, that happens for many American speakers, especially in the, in the further reaches, the further north that you go, you know, if you're from Minnesota or something like that. Hoping that I've offended a number of people at this point. That's all right. I'm from Iowa. It's in the middle. So, this sound, this awe sound, this thought sound. There's another lexical set that J.C. Wells uses that fits this pretty well for most Americans, which is the cloth lexical set. Now, when you get to words like the lot set and the cloth set, those are spelled with O, whereas father and then thought is spelled O-U. In fact, we threw in a G-H just for the heck of it. So, it's not purely spelled with O. Almost all Lot words and cloth words are spelled with an O. That's a big key to learning that. If you want to learn more about that, look at my video for Hell's Corner. It's a really important thing for you to learn for learning a variety of accents. So, this thought sound. Well, what tends to happen for many British speakers is that it actually gets a lot of additional rounding. In fact, it may get so much rounding that it starts to almost become maybe a pure O thought. 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 That's what I thought. Something like that. It can become that strong, that degree of rounding. Or I might represent it simply with that, with the symbol, the diacritic, for additional lip rounding. Front of the mouth, back of the mouth. So, this is additional lip rounding. What really happens for a lot of Americans is the absolute opposite, where there's reduced rip, lip rounding on that, which may start to approach feeling like it becomes what I talked about in the last one as the potentially lot set for certain speakers, like people from Boston, for example. A lot. Cloth. Right? So, again, you can look at something on Hell's Corner. You can also look at a video I did about comparing Boston and New York accents. So, you can hear some of these distinctions, especially with regards to Hell's Corner. So, a reduced rounding on that is really common for Americans. So, when we deal with Hell's Corner, we end up with something for most Americans, I would say, approaching sort of generican. 
is father, lot, cloth, thought. So there's some rounding, but it's not like it's father, lot, cloth, thought. It doesn't tend to get that rounded. Cloth, ah, 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 ah. The difference can be pretty doggone subtle. So it can almost feel like, for many Americans, it's the same with a little lip rounding. Father, th thought, thought. Tha uh, thought, thought. Almost the same, maybe? Right. How do you want to describe it? That's really how I want to use phonetics is as a tool, right? So in thinking about this, the thing that I would say that's important is to recognize how not rounded it is for American speakers, but that there is a distinction between, for most American speakers, father, and thought. Again, not all American speakers. And the extremes, and the extreme of it is not super different unless we're talking about something like New York, where you get something more like father and thought, thought, where you can get that super rounding going on, where it almost starts to approach that British-ish rounding. Now, when you get into some other accents, you have that same kind of merging that can happen in Hell's Corner. So again, Hell's Corner is one of the most important things with regards to vowels for you to learn about when you're digging into a variety of accents. Uh, and I'm doing this as an extension of some work that I've been doing on a set of materials for Generican and Phonetics that jump into relaxed Generican, but also elevated generic and, and even the transmid-Atlantic sort of accent where you get into that sort of thing of like films from the 1930s, that kind of thing, but perhaps not going quite that extreme with it. Um, and then it has to sort of dabble a little bit in RP because it has such an impact on those elevated versions because those elevated versions of generic and tend to be, I like to think of them almost as a an inferiority complex about speech where Americans are, were reaching for something that's a little more British -ish, ish ish. So a little more insight on one of those back vowels, the thought or cloth lexical set of words.